Hi, it's sugar time. So we got to meet up with Joseph and then we got to go to the snow cavern. So let's go. The only way to reach the snow cavern is on my snowcraft. I keep the snowcraft hidden in the mine. There's a blue stone on the first floor that marks the spot. Look behind the stone and to the right. The secret room's there and the snowcraft is inside. I'm sorry I couldn't help you find the mithril. So I want to make up for that by pitching in now. What are we waiting for? Let's go. So the mine must be Summit Falls because that's where we found the mithril. And I'm kind of guessing Joseph seems like the monk type. I'm just going to take a look at him real fast. Judging by his stats and gear, I'm thinking my guys are a little bit more powerful than the game expects them to be. He's got like 200 something hit points. My guys are at like a thousand. <laughs> At least Guy is getting pretty close to a thousand. And I think he's a monk, so I'm just gonna take the weapons off of him and see how his hand combat works. Joseph turns a small rock jutting out of the wall and a passage appears. The Snowcraft is in here. Okay, I'm going to be honest that it took me a little bit to get here. I knew it had to be Summit Falls, but I forgot about the Blue Rock thing. I did check the Blue Rock, and I expected the Blue Rock to do something. But the game clearly says what to do. I think I'm just a little bit distracted because I'm trying to pay attention to the, you know, timing and stuff. <laughs> I think because I'm recording too, it kind of distracts me and I don't remember all the information. I've heard other people who do Let's Plays talk about that kind of thing and it's kind of true. I think just because you have multiple things going on, you can miss something real easy. But I just cut all of that out because there's no reason to put people through that. I went through the whole dungeon real fast, but it was completely unnecessary. But I am keeping up with the story. I know we're getting the goddess bell so that we can get into Kashwan Keep, so that we could get the Sunfire, so that we could destroy the Dreadnought. <laughs> We've got a whole line of things going on. It's kind of interesting that they're keeping this little open spot on the party to rotate in NPC. Well, not NPCs exactly, but um, temporary party members throughout the game. Because you can only have four, and usually you would just have whatever four that you have but they decided to kind of put in little story players that pop in and out of your party. They were supposed to have Leon, Maria's brother, so I'm assuming we're going to find him at some point, and then I wonder if he just becomes a permanent member. Lately, I've been trying to get back into drawing. I'm kind of a mediocre artist, but I've always wanted to be better at art. I've just never taken the time to do it because I prioritized other things. But seeing all the AI stuff, you know, I've talked about it a few times, and seeing so many people kind of stalling out on, you know, actually learning how to do all this stuff themselves, kind of inspired me to, you know, maybe I should give it a try again so that I can actually do the stuff when other people can't. But I always have this one issue where when I get a line down the way I like it, I'm then afraid to do anything else because I might ruin that line that I really like. So I always have to push back that because otherwise I'll just get stuck in one spot where I'm afraid to do anything because I think it might mess up what I already have. It's also made me really appreciate DreamWorks character designs because they have a lot of very oddball designs that are kind of fun to draw. While normally I'm an anime fan and a manga fan, I always kind of tried to copy that sort of style. I'm actually finding that I think this more sort of cartoonish style might suit me more, with a lot more exaggeration and really pushing unusual proportions, emphasizing features that are usually downplayed, things like that. 
For example, a character like Megamind has a big head, pretty long nose, very thin cheeks, or just Minion in general. I mean, he's a fish controlling a robot gorilla body that's just all around unusual. And I've been trying to draw Hot Flash, which most people probably won't know her. She was cut from the movie, but you can find her picture in the art book. And she is short. She's a woman of a certain age. You know, she's a little bit older, so she's got a lot of wrinkles. And she has flaming hair. And she's got slender upper body with a sort of large lower body. And her facial expression is very exaggerated. She's got a wide face, the aggressively pouting lips, and very strong eyeshadow. And she just looks like Grandma has had enough of your BS. And it's kind of fun to draw. It's just not the type of character you usually see in anything. So that's been something that I've been up to on my own time. And I've kind of been thinking about finding other people who are also learning art. I know PewDiePie recently made a video, which was nice to see because I hope that encourages more people to pick up a pen and give it a try. You don't have to be super special or super talented right off the bat. You can just do it. And it's really encouraging to see as a response to all the image generation stuff. I've seen a lot of people feeling demoralized because they think art jobs and writing jobs and other creative jobs are going to be replaced just by these generators. But I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So if you want to do art or writing or something, just get into it. When I was looking it up, I actually saw that image generators, they've been around for a long time. Like they used something similar in Shrek in order to make all the trees. And that was back in 2001. So we've had pretty similar stuff around for decades now. And it hasn't replaced humans because you really need a human eye on this stuff. Once you try to leave it up to a machine, you'll get all kinds of weird stuff just as bad as how they do hands. I think I'm going to give this to Guy so I can level up his magic stuff while we're just walking around. He has Cure, but the uh, black magic levels up other stuff. I'm not going to bother with Joseph because I'm sure he'll be leaving soon enough. Okay, so can I just pull a fury on here and just stick a spear in each of Maria's hands? Looks like I can. So maybe she'll level up Spear twice as fast. I actually got a comment on one of my clips about the empty rooms in Final Fantasy 2. I guess <laughs> I guess there's being a bunch of empty rooms around is just a thing. I was wondering why there were so many. Because it seems like something should be in them. There just isn't. But they're not that annoying. A lot of them were right next to each other. And I just check them real fast and leave. Hopefully there aren't too many that are on opposite sides of a room and you have to go check them and there's just nothing there. It's kind of a weird design choice. Doesn't really do anything except waste time. I know there hasn't really been a lot in these chests, but I gotta go check them all. Varian's actually pretty decent at his pretty much singular spell. <laughs> I mean, he's got life in case somebody dies, and he's got Cure, just in case. I should level that up, too. Actually, Cure should be good against these guys, but that's okay. An ancient sword. I wonder how that stacks up against a mithril sword. So the attack is higher, but the accuracy is way down. I wonder if that'll end up being worth it. I'll give it a try, but maybe I'll switch it out later if he just stops hitting enough. There really are just a lot of empty rooms. That one was just a good waste of time going from one side of the room to the other. I'd be curious to hear what their thought process was on that. Because I can't think of anything beyond just wasting time. Okay, what's this? Snook? Shit! Giant beavers. I wonder if this is a precursor to the Moogles. 
I'm assuming that one up there says something different. But I'm just gonna see if any of these just suddenly say like, Hi, I'm Bob or something. Snook, snook, chick. Guys speak beaver. Snook, snook, chick. Secret passage in wall to right. Monster guard bell. Bell in wall. Snook, snook, chick. I was just thinking that guy hadn't had a lot of lines for a long time. Furian had talked and Maria had talked, but Guy hadn't really said anything. I'm kind of wondering why he's different, because I thought he grew up with Furion and Maria, but for some reason he acts more like he grew up in a forest. I wonder if they'll get into that. And I remember the first Final Fantasy, at least the book, said that Black Mage could talk to animals, but they never did anything with that. So I wonder if this is where they actually used that idea. Yeah, everybody already has one of those. That's an adamant toys guarding the bell. Stay on your toes. I guess this is just the big boss sort of music. It's a little bit different than what I would have expected. What it kind of makes me think of is Lakshmi from Final Fantasy XIV, what her boss music is like. It feels more like it would be a tune for a specific boss rather than a general tune for all of the bosses. And the one this boss always makes me think of is just Final Fantasy XV, because they just made him a mountain in that. <laughs> He was a literal big boss. It doesn't seem like this fight's going to take too long. My guys hit him pretty hard. And he's not hitting back all that hard. Yeah, there he goes. That was pretty fast. There's something set in the wall. It's the goddess's bell. Ah, so that's where that door went. I was wondering in the beginning. So we have the goddess spell and it's time to get to Kashwan Keep. Curses! You've already gotten to the goddess's bell. First you ruin my standing with the emperor and now this. The emperor will never forgive me for messing this up. If I ever go back to the empire, he'll have my head, but I'm still a soldier. If I'm going to die, you're coming with me. I wasn't expecting this. But I imagine he'll be an easy boss because he was not portrayed as a very tough guy. But then what's going to happen? Yeah, that was really fast. This is a very dramatic disintegration. Hey, hey! I may have lost, but don't think that you've won. I've booby-trapped this cave. Just a little parting gift from me to you. I'll be waiting for you in hell! Mega! Damn it. Go on, get out. We not leave you. 
I can't hold it much longer. Run. It's up to you now, Furion. My sweet Nelly. Joseph. Oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting that. That's a bit of a game changer as far as the story goes. The lady who stands outside is gone. Poor Joseph. I'll look after Nelly in his place. I know that would make him happy. Daddy. Daddy isn't coming back, is he? So she's there to take care of the kid. No, not Joseph. Don't let Joseph's death be in vain. You have to get that bell to Kashuan. Joseph's dead, isn't he? Seems like everybody here was a big fan of Joseph. And we're going to Kashwan Keep, but I imagine we need to go report this to Hilda. We bought that bell with Joseph's life. We cannot let his death be in vain. He must take the bell to Kashwan Keep at once. Using the goddess's bell, you should be able to break the seal. Right now, time is our enemy. Sid and I will meet you outside the keep when you're done. We'll head to Kashawan Keep next time, but let's discuss the story for a bit. So, Joseph dying. Now, it probably doesn't have the emotional impact that later entries have. Because, how much do we really get to know Joseph? He's established earlier, and we know about his daughter and everything. But in reality, he probably gets maybe like three paragraphs of text. So there's probably not a lot of people who say Joseph is their favorite character. But he was already established. We knew who he was. And for me, for somebody going in blind, I wasn't expecting that to happen. So that took me off guard. So I do like it. I don't think it hit as hard as other entries do. But it also answers my issue with the Dreadnought attack. Because one of my complaints about that is that it's all NPCs. There's no named characters who died, so it still feels pretty safe. Now we have a main character who died, or at least somebody who has a name. So that puts on the table, anybody can die. Even if they have a name now, they can die. So that changes things up. So I think it's pretty good. Probably for the time this hit really hard because things have changed a lot. Now you have voice actors who give really great character and uh, you get really good visuals, body language, all that kind of stuff. They didn't have that back then. So it's much easier to get an emotional impact now than with like, little sprites. But, and I think it was pretty good. I really like that part of the story. And I'm kind of interested to see if we'll lose anybody else and what's going to happen. So next time we're headed to Kashwan Keep. I hope you join me and I'll see you. <laughs>